As Director of Athletics, I want to welcome you to the 2020 Sparty Awards. Last winter, when we started planning for these awards, we had no idea that this would be the result. I've been involved in college athletics for 50 years, and I've never been anything as devastating as what we went through this spring when all the sports seasons were canceled. I'm very thankful to our student athletes, and my heart really goes out to all the spring student athletes that were not able to participate, and especially the seniors who ended their career. I want to congratulate all the winners today, all right? And I also want to thank all our student athletes for being a part of our program and all the staff and coaches that belong to the Spartan Nation. Enjoy the ceremony, all right? And go Spartans! Hello, Spartan Nation. Welcome to the 2019-2020 Sparty Awards. My name is Dennis Rima, and I am the voice of the University of Dubuque Spartans. And it is an honor for me to be able to announce the nominees and the winners of the 2019-20 Sparty Awards, as well as the Scholar Athlete Awards, the Went Character Athlete Awards, and the Spartan Academic Achievement Awards. I hope you enjoy this 2020 rendition of the Sparty Awards. Let's start out first by announcing the participants in the Calapity Summer 2020 Research Fellowship Program. Those athletes involved are Madison Bowers, women's golf, Zach Elias, men's soccer, Megan Gilley, women's golf, Kathleen Massino, volleyball, and Isaiah Williams, wrestling. And now let's meet the Went Character Scholar Athletes. From men's soccer, Daniel Baxai. From women's golf, Madison Bowers. Women's soccer, Carissa Brown. Men's golf, Bradley Buchel. Women's soccer, Natalie Dinsbach. Softball, Lauren Donair. Men's soccer, Zach Elias. Softball, Nicolette Evans. Also in softball, Brooke Goodman. Women's basketball, Lauren Griffith. Women's soccer, Ireland Hill. Softball, Alyssa Claywitter. Men's lacrosse, William Kowalewski. Women's soccer, Elena Krasowski. Women's basketball, Kathleen Mathias. Men's tennis, Brady McIntyre. Women's basketball, Morgan Meerstein. Men's lacrosse, Dominic Mulcahy. Football, Joshua Raby. Baseball, Brandon Ramos. Football and lacrosse, Adam Steingraber. Volleyball, Emily Swanson. Women's basketball, Josephine Thomas. And wrestling, Isaiah Williams. Those receiving Went Character Athlete Awards. From women's soccer, Carissa Brown. Men's golf, Brad Buskell. Wrestling, Ethan Kane. Football, Keyshawn Carr. Men's tennis, Sincere Davis. Indoor track and field, Caroline Ferguson. Indoor track and field, Clayton Hahn. Women's tennis, Samantha Hines. Women's golf, Sydney Colleen. Men's soccer, Glory Lawara. Softball, Gabrielle Marchese. Outdoor track and field, Zach Nats. Men's cross country, Michael Orcutt. Cheer and stunt, Allie Packard. Men's lacrosse, Ethan Senesak. Outdoor track and field, Alyssa Scrove. 
Cross Country, Lucy Syverson. Women's Basketball, Josie Thomas. Men's Basketball, Henry Thompson. Baseball, Isolino Valencia. And Volleyball, Kendra Witte. And our two went character athletes of the year. For the females, women's basketball, Josie Thomas. And for the males in baseball, Isolino Valencia. And now, let's meet the Spartan Academic Achievement Award winners. Riley Andreessen. Blaze Barista. Ashley Bowsman, Allison Beeman, Jakira Bryant, Ethan Kane, Tyler Carlson, Luke Carroll, Amanda Klebeck, Katie Eden, Megan Eli, Sarah Faraday, Nicole Fens, Annalise Hawk, Brendan Hazelton, Jenna Highmark, Jacob Hyder, Mackenzie Helgamo, Laura Klein, Gabrielle Marchese, Alexa Martin, Isabella Mazantai, Heather Muntz, Alexandra Packard, Ashley Palacios Quinones, Colfe Pointer, Brandon Ramos, Tavian Rumpel, Kayla Schlichting, Alyssa Scrove, Kayla Slowick, Grace Strouser, Lucy Syverson, Josephine Thomas, Henry Thompson, Joseph Tobin, Isolino Valencia, Haley Wong, and Kara Wright. We have three individuals who received the Spartan Academic Athlete Excellence Award. In volleyball, with a 3.99 GPA, Riley Andreessen. In wrestling, with a 3.89 GPA, Ethan Kane. And in cross country, with a 3.89 GPA, Jacob Heider. And now for your Sparty Award nominees and winners as voted on by the University of Dubuque head coaches. We have four nominees for the Focus Award. Nominee number one, Carissa Brown in soccer. She was second team all North region as well as scholar all region. She was ARC all conference, which is American Rivers Conference. She started and played in all 19 matches. She volunteered with Live Like Jack organization in Dubuque, making Thanksgiving care packages. Carissa also volunteered at the St. Vincent de Paul in Dubuque, where she sorted and stocked clothing, shoes, shoes, jewelry, and miscellaneous items. She also expresses gratitude and thanks and volunteered her time with those who give and receive care at the Manor Care in Dubuque those who work at and visit the Lantern Center in Dubuque, and the paraprofessionals at Washington Middle School, those who work at the UD Registrar's Office, and those who work with international students at UD. Carissa also donates blood, and she works with the the Mini Kickers Camp at the Dubuque Soccer Complex, and she has also volunteered at the Hope House Homeless Shelter in Dubuque. Our second nominee is Keyshawn Carr in football who is a member of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, a 2020 Spring Convocation Leader, 
very active in campus ministry. A campus went scholar and mentor and led the prayer at the football game day chapel. Our third nominee is Thomas Martin from the lacrosse team, who's a dedicated teammate with a positive attitude and work ethic. He's also a member of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. He's a SAC officer. He's a flight student. He attends church regularly, and he wears his faith on his sleeve, and you can sense his faith in himself and in the future while around him. And finally, we have Josie Thomas from women's basketball, who is the president of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, a member of the Christian Leadership Council. She's also a SAC member and a Went Scholar recipient. She organizes multiple activities on campus through her participation in the University of Dubuque organizations that we just listed above. She mentors young people in the Dubuque community area. She also volunteers at the Dubuque Multicultural Center, St. Mark's Youth Center, and multiple elementary schools. On the women's basketball team, she exemplifies her Christian principles and how she positively interacts with her teammates. And she is the perfect example of sportsmanship with how she carries herself on the basketball court and how she interacts with opposing teams, fans, and officials. Those are the four nominees for the Focus Award and the winner of the Focus Award from basketball, Josie Thomas. We also have two nominees for the Community Service Award from cross country Mackenzie Helgamo, Special Olympic Unified Track Meet. She has donated 60 hours toward the Special Olympics. She's partnered with UD athletes with Special Olympians and assigned volunteer positions. She created event heat sheets, scoring sheets, and reseeding when needed. She coordinated the silent auction by asking local businesses for contributions and preparing auction sheets. And she also coordinated the awards and signage for the Special Olympics event. She also gave 35 hours to the Web of Life. She participated in the biannual highway cleanups, picking up trash on our section of Highway 52. And she also coordinated and attended STEM day and night events at the local middle and elementary schools. And our second nominee for the Community Service Award from soccer is Carolina Lund. She participated in the pre-law program called Moot Court. She also was a freshman rep for the Student Government Association. She is a, on the Student Athletic Advisory Committee. She's a part of the Honor Seminar Program. She has been a tutor for criminal justice as well as the pre-law moot court. And she also has helped with the food drive bank at the Lord of Life Lutheran Church. So those are our two nominees for the Community Service Award. And the winner of that is Mackenzie Helgamo in cross country. And now let's meet the four male newcomer of the year athletes, all freshmen. First in wrestling, Daryl Aiello. Daryl was ranked in the top 10 at the 285 pound weight class. He pinned the number seven nationally ranked co-wrestler. He finished his wrestling season with 21 wins and only four losses and helped his team achieve a top 24 national ranking. Also nominated lacrosse player Gavin Hughes, who played in all 17 games. He had 15 goals, 15 assists. He led all other freshmen in output, third in team scoring, and he did this while changing his main position on the field. Our third nominee for Male Newcomer of the Year is Cordell Stillmunkus from football, a freshman transfer. His American Rivers conference accomplishments include being chosen to the first team all conference as a running back. He led the ARC in rushing yards and his season stats 170 carries for 859 yards. That's a 5.1 yard per average carry. He scored nine touchdowns and had 1100 all-purpose yards. And our fourth nominee is Lucas Von Braun, a freshman soccer player who started all 18 games. He had two assists from the season at the defensive midfield position, and his UD accomplishments include being the third highest 
minutes played on the team with 1,556 minutes, and he broke the school record for single-season shutouts of 10. Those are our four male newcomers of the year, and the winner is Cordell Stillmunkus. The four nominees for the Female Newcomer of the Year. In soccer, Brooke Brodzinski, who was third team All-North Region, only the second University of Dubuque freshman to ever do so. She was honorable mention All-Conference. She was the American Rivers Conference Offensive Player of the Week. She started all 19 games. She was second in the conference in shots with 64 and the team's leading scorer with six goals. Our second nominee is Kaylin Featheringill, a junior transfer softball player. Her American River accomplishments include being a first-team all-conference outfielder. Her accomplishments with our University of Dubuque softball team, she was the March Athlete of the Month. She has the school record in hits, run scores, and total bases, and she's tied for first in stolen bases. Her season stats from the spring of 2019 included a 427 batting average, 33 runs scored, nine doubles, three triples, three home runs, 17 stolen bases, and 88 total bases. Our third nominee from the volleyball team is Grace Hintz, who was selected first team all-conference American River Conference. She was third in kills per set, ninth in hitting percentage. She helped our Spartan team win the American Rivers Conference Volleyball Tournament and win a bid into the NCAA Regionals. She played in 30 of 33 matches. Her season stats included 3.18 kills per set. She led the team in hitting efficiency. She had 26 kills versus North Nebraska Wesleyan University, and she also had 18 kills versus Loris. And our fourth female newcomer is Tabria Thomas of the basketball team. Her 2019-20 season accomplishments included leading the teams in minutes played, points, field goal percentage, free throws made and attempted, and steals. And she was third on the team in assists, blocks, and fourth in rebounds. Those are our four nominees for Female Newcomer of the Year, and the winner of the Female Newcomer of the Year is from volleyball, Grace Hintz.
And now let's meet the seven nominees for male breakout player of the year. First of all, in football, Jacob Beasley, who never played offensive line in his career. He made the switch over to offensive line from defensive line in the spring of 2019. He was chosen first team all-conference offensive line, starting all 10 games. He had zero sacks allowed against him, 29 knockdowns, 89% overall season grade, and he led the way for our conference's leading rusher. Our second nominee is Tyler Cernahaus from Cross Country. Tyler showed great improvement, which culminated in running the number three fastest time in UD history over 8,000 meters with his 25 minute and 52 second finish at the Jim Drew Invite at the UW Lacrosse Invitational, just outpacing sophomore teammate Mark Beekler, who ran the number four fastest time in school history. The race at UWL was a two-minute improvement from the year before, and he improved from 116th to 27th place in one of the largest meets in the country. He finished as either UD's first or second runner all year. Our third nominee for Male Breakout Player of the Year is Sam Kopecki, a member of the lacrosse team who waited out his time while competing for the starting spot and for the 2019 season, his senior season, he finally earned it. While earning the goalie position, he managed to end his season with the best save percentage in program history at 55%. Sam also ended his career with the highest save percentage in program history at 56%. He also, during his senior year campaign, managed to get 45 ground balls and caused two turnovers. His career total before his senior year was two ground balls and zero turnovers. He ended the 2019 campaign with 164 saves. Our fourth nominee for Male Breakout Player of the Year is Jordan Nelson, a member of the baseball team. Jordan received all-conference honors for the first time in his career after a solid junior season. He started 10 of the 12 games that he started on the mound in 2019, working his way to a 5-4 record and through two complete games. Over his 65 and a third innings, he had an ERA of 3.31 after allowing just 24 earned runs while striking out 52 opposing batters and walking just 16 for a 3.33 strike-to-walkout ratio. Nelson was a key contributor to helping the Spartans tie a school record for most wins in a season. Our fifth nominee for Male Breakout Player of the Year is Peter Reagan of the men's basketball team. He made an impact for the UD men's basketball team in his first two seasons, but the junior year took a huge leap for his third year with the Spartans. In 2020, Peter put up career highs in every single statistical category, including minutes, points, rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks. He also has been productive in his first two years with the Spartans. However, he had never been recognized as a member of the American Rivers Conference All-Conference team. That changed this season. Peter's 16.8 points per game were 6th in the league, 7 rebounds per game was 5th in the league, 17 steals and 11 blocks earned him a spot on the all-conference first team. A tremendous accomplishment to go from no all-conference accolades to the first team in one of the best leagues in the country. Peter also showed up on the big stage throughout the season, scoring 29 points on the road against Loris and 27 points in a big conference road win against Simpson. Peter Reagan exploded into one of the best players in the conference in 2020. Our sixth nominee is Jeremiah Steed, Outdoor Track and Field. Jeremiah found himself among a talented group of sprinters as a freshman, only able to break into the 4 by one as an alternate. After not qualifying for a conference in the 100-meter outdoors in 2018, nor breaking 11 seconds, he went on to become the American Rivers Conference champion in that event in 2019. He ran a personal best of 10.78 seconds and helped lead UD to a 1-2-3 finish in the 100 meters at the championships. He also earned all-conference <laughs> accolades in the triple jump 
an event he had just started full-time that season and helped lead the 4 by 100 meter relay to a top 20 ranking on the season. And our final nominee for the Male Breakout Player of the Year is Brandon White of the soccer team, who played in all but five minutes of the season, starting all 18 games. Brandon broke one single season record and moved up several other records considerably. School record for shutouts in a single season with nine. Second in career wins with 20. Second in career shutouts with 17. White also received the award for Student Athlete of the Month in September of 2019. During the month, Brandon conceded just six goals in nine games, held five opposing teams scoreless during the month, and collected 33 saves and helped the team off to a 6-2-1 start on the season. Those are the seven nominees for the Male Breakout Player of the Year. And the winner of the Male Breakout Player of the Year is Peter Reagan of Men's Basketball. We now want to introduce the five nominees for the Female Breakout Player of the Year. Our first nominee is Amanda Klebeck from the soccer team. As one of only two seniors, it was a big, big year for Amanda. She took on a leadership role this season as one of the team captains. As a defensive player for the team, Amanda started and played in all 19 games as well as scoring four goals. This year was also a season of firsts for Amanda. She earned her first career American Rivers Conference Offensive Player of the Week, her first ARC All-Conference Honors, and her first career Third Team All-Region Honors. First career ARC Offensive Player of the Week Honors for October 14, 2019. She also received her first career ARC All-Conference Honors, her first career All-North Region Third Team Honors, and she started and played in all 19 matches where she scored four goals, one of those being a game winner. Our second nominee for Female Breakout Player of the Year from track and field is Caroline Ferguson. Caroline broke out in her sophomore season, moving up from 12th place indoors and 15th outdoor in the shot put as a freshman to become the conference champion and All-American in that event in 2019. Her first year personal best was 12.59 meters in the shot put, improving by over six feet to 14.16 meters or 46 and feet five and five 5.5 inches in her breakout season. Also, her hammer throw improved from 40.1 meters as a non-factor throw to 50.36 meters, placing fourth at conference and putting her in the top 25 in the nation. Our third nominee for, fe for Female Breakout Player of the Year is Brandy Herity of the softball team. Brandy ended her career with her best season at the plate, hitting 282 with 35 hits, over half of them going for extra bases. She broke the individual school record for home runs with eight and played at 42 RBIs for the 2019 team. The fourth nominee for Female Breakout Player of the Year is Daniela Miranda of the golf team. 2019-20 season, Daniela won four individual titles out of nine tournaments she played in. Those were the Myrtle Beach Shootout, the Monmouth College Invite, the American River Conference Preview, and the Luther College Classic. She had the second best scoring average in the American Rivers Conference at 77.9 shots. Best scoring average in UD history was 77.9. All conference in the American Rivers Conference, Daniel also led our women's golf team to the American Rivers Conference Championship, the first time in school history. And our fifth and final nominee for the Female Breakout Player of the Year is Grace Strouser of the volleyball team. 
After playing as a defensive specialist her freshman, sophomore, and junior seasons, Grace stepped into the role of libero this fall. It was definitely a breakout year for her, averaging nearly six digs per set in her new role. She had a career-high 41 digs and played her best match of the season in the ARC Tournament Championship game against Wartburg. In her final season, she finished with 753 digs, which puts her as the single-season dig leader, number one in the UD record book. She lands in fifth place in the UD record book for total career digs at 1,770. Those are the five nominees for Female Breakout Player of the Year. And the winner of the Female Breakout Player of the Year is Daniela Miranda of the Women's Golf Team. The nominees for Best Performance by a Male. Football, Dwayne Allen. Going into the last game of his career and needing 120 yards to become the school's all-time leading rusher, Dwayne ran for 152 yards on 27 carries versus Nebraska Wesleyan. He became the school's all-time leading rusher with 3,116 rushing yards and led UD to a 42-7 victory and secured a second-place finish in the conference. Our second nominee is Sam Kopecki of the lacrosse team. In a low-scoring affair against Monmouth College at Monmouth, in which the Spartans ended up winning a 7-6 game through four overtime periods, through those first four quarters, Sam managed to get 15 saves, which is at a high save percentage. In lacrosse, the first goal in overtime wins. Sam, through four overtime periods, managed to not let a goal go by and actually made three key saves in the overtime periods to keep the Spartans in the game. Sam finished the game with 18 saves, 11 ground balls. His save percentage was 75% for the game, which is outstanding, and Sam was easily the game MVP as we would not have won the game without his incredible play in the net. Our third nominee for best performance by a male, Chase Keeter of the baseball team. A senior right-handed pitcher from Bellevue, Iowa, Chase tossed nine innings in UD's 8-3 win over Concordia, Wisconsin on March 15th. In his complete game performance, which was a no-hitter through six innings, he struck out 11 did not walk a man, and allowed only four hits and gave up one earned run. With his performance, he earned the American Rivers Conference Pitcher of the Week. Our fourth nominee from the soccer team is Glory Lawara, who scored the only goal, providing the game winner on the road against conference rival Wartburg. His performance personified the attitude of the team throughout the year, with this standout game and conference win for the Spartans, battling for every ball until the last minute to ensure a hard-fought win. Our fifth nominee from track and field is Blaze Murfin, who entered his final outdoor national meet ranked to score in only two events of the three he qualified in. After the weekend was over, Blaze became the only athlete to earn all-conference honors in three separate throwing field events. He finished fourth in the shot put, fifth in the discus, and sixth in the hammer throw. These became his 10th, 11th, and 12th All-American honors of his career, 
solidifying him as one of the most decorated throwers in NC2A history. And our final nominee for best performance by a male is Chris Nielsen of the wrestling team. Chris helped UD earn a top 24 national team duels ranking with the team's win against number 20 nationally ranked Central. At 197 pounds, Chris earned a 6-5 decision over Central's Gavin Babcock to give the Spartans a chance heading into the 10th and final match. UD junior Daryl Aiello did not wait long at 285, taking Duncan Lee down immediately and pinning him in just 29 seconds to give the Spartans the 21-20 upset victory. Chris finished top eight in the NCAA regionals and was an All-Rivers Conference Academic All-Conference member. And those are the six nominees for Best Performance by a Male Athlete. And the winner of Best Performance by a Male Athlete is Blaze Murfin from Track and Field. The four nominees for the best performance by a female athlete. First in track and field, Allison Beeman, who qualified for the 2019 NCAA Outdoor Track and Field Championships for the first time in individual events. She went into the meet ranked third in the 100 meters, 13th in the 200 meter, and as a member of UD's 4x100 meter relay. She improved upon her qualifying time in the 200 meter by almost a full second to run a new school record, 23.75 seconds, and became an NCAA runner-up and All-American in the event. She also improved in the 100 meter by 0.15 second that weekend to set another UT, UD all-time mark to earn her second All-American honor of the weekend. Her performance at the NCAA championships solidified her as the fastest woman in University of Dubuque history and one of the fastest all-time women in the American Rivers Conference. Our second nominee for female best performance is Amanda Klebeck from the soccer team. Amanda scored a pair of header goals in a 2-1 to comeback win over the number two ranked team in the North Region, Wartburg. She scored the goal to tie the game at 1-1 to at the 32-minute mark and would earn the game winner with under five minutes left in the game off a corner kick. The Knights' defense held UD to only two shots and two shots on goal in the game with Klebeck making both shots in her opportunities for scores. The loss was just the second loss for the Knights goalkeeper, who averaged over an 80% save average. Wartburg would only allow three losses on the season. This victory on October 9, 2019 in Waverly was UD's first win versus Wartburg since the 2014 season. The third nominee for best performance by a female athlete is Darby Hawtrey from the volleyball team. Although an injury sidelined her in early September, Darby was still able to leave her mark on the program in 2019. She's being nominated for her standout performance against Wartburg in the American Rivers Conference Tournament Championship game. In one of the biggest matches of the season, Darby tallied 20 kills with a hitting efficiency of 231. She was nearly unstoppable, averaging five kills a set against the number one seeded team in the American Rivers Conference. Her performance led the Spartans to their second consecutive ARC Tournament Championship and the conference's only bid to the 2019 NCAA Regional Tournament. And the fourth and final nominee for Best Female Performance is Abby McBee of the softball team. As a freshman, Abby went up against the number, nine, the number 13 team in the country with a season on the line and she dominated not just once, 
twice, but three times. In game one of a doubleheader, she threw an eight-inning, one-hit shutout to earn a one-to-nothing win over Luther. In game two, she returned to the circle in the fifth inning with the game tied and continued to throw five more innings of three-hit ball, allowing only one run to earn the win in the ninth inning. And with our conference win or go-home game at stake, Abby threw six and two-thirds innings, allowing only two earned runs to keep the UD softball season alive. Those are the four nominees for Best Female Performance. And the winner of the Best Female Performance goes to Allison Beeman for Track and Field. And now we're going to have the three nominees for the greatest upset by a male team or individual. The first nominee is the football team's road victory over Central College. Central was ranked 23rd in the country and unbeaten. The Spartans were unranked. Central was 24-3-1 all-time versus UD at home going into that game. Central was also 4-0, averaging 46 points per game on the season. UD won that game 28-7 and knocked Central out of first place in the conference. The second nominee for greatest upset by a male team or individual was the soccer team with a road victory over number 12th ranked Central 2-0. A first-half goal from Matthias Erickson and a second-half goal from Glory Lawara, along with a shutout for Brandon White and the defense, sent UD on their way to beat number 12 ranked in the nation Central College 2 to nothing on the road. They handed Central their only loss in the conference and just their second loss of the entire year. That was a true team win in every sense of the word. And the third nominee for greatest upset by a male team or individual is Luke Radicke of the wrestling team. UD captured a hard-fought victory at 149 pounds when Luke Radicke edged Brock Rathburn from Wartburg, a former NCAA champion, by a 6-4 to margin on Saturday, January 25th at the American Rivers Conference Duels. Luke finished his freshman year as an NCAA Academic All-American, an 18-5 record, and an ARC Academic All-Conference selection. Those are the three nominees for greatest upset by a male individual or team. And the winner is the Soccer Road Victory over Central College, who was ranked number 12th in the nation.
We have four nominees for the greatest upset by a female team or individual. The first nominee is the women's soccer team 2-1 to one win over Wartburg in Waverly. Wartburg has always been a formidable opponent for the UD women's soccer team, especially this year. The team had not won against the Wartburg since 2014. Going into the game at Waverly, Wartburg was ranked number two in the North Region. After Wartburg took an early lead in the first half, UD needed to equalize before half to keep the playing field leveled. So the only two seniors stepped up to the plate, Amanda Klebeck and Alexa Martin. A goal from Klebeck and an assist from Martin would put the score at 1-1 to one going into halftime. Another Klebeck-Martin combo would strike again later in the second half to boost UD to the upset win over Wartburg 2-1 to one at Waverly. The second nominee for greatest upset by a female team or individual is the softball team sweeping number 13 Luther. At the cutoff for making the postseason conference tournament and having to win four straight games, UD faced number 13 Luther and Nebraska Wesleyan to finish off their regular season. At top-ranked Luther, over the course of two games, the team won the first game by a score of 1-0 in eight innings and then kept the season alive by winning game two 5-3 in nine innings. Abby McBee threw 13 total innings, allowing one run to a senior heavy Luther team that had come into the season after a third-place national finish the year before. The third nominee... For greatest upset by a female team or individual is Allison Beeman of the track and field team at the American Rivers Conference Outdoor Championships. Entering the meet, Allie was seated behind national leader Gabby Nolan from Loris College, who was the defending indoor national champion sprinter. She rolled past Nolan to win the 100 meters in a personal best school record time and also defeated Nolan in the 200 meter to set another personal school record and qualify for the Nationals. The best performance of all was her and her teammates in the 4x100 where Beeman held off Loris NCAA championship winning 4x100 anchor leg Nolan to win the ARC title. And the fourth nominee for greatest upset by a female team or individual is the volleyball conference tournament win over Wartburg. The volleyball team is being nominated for the greatest upset of the year for their win in the American Rivers Conference Tournament Championship Finals. The number three seeded Spartans upset the number one seeded Knights in a three to one victory on November 9th at Wartburg. With their win, the Spartans won back to back American River Conference tournaments championships and qualified for their second consecutive NC2A regional tournament berth. Those are the four nominees for greatest upset by the female individual or team. And the winner is the softball team sweeping number 13 ranked Luther. And now we're going to have the three nominees for Male Athlete of the Year. The first nominee is Blaze Barista of the football team. He was an All-American defensive back, first-team all-conference defensive back, first in the country in pass breakups, third in the country for interceptions, fourth in career at UD for interceptions, and he had 25 tackles, one tackle for loss, three interceptions, one forced fumble, two block punts, and Blaze also returned one block punt for a touchdown. Our second nominee for Male Athlete of the Year is Michael Django of the lacrosse team, 
who finished first in scoring in UD history. He graduated early, and he did that in only three seasons. His season stats, he played 51 games with 104 goals, 33 assists. He scored 137 points, 306 shots on goal, and 198 were on goal, 61 ground balls, and he caused 23 turnovers. And Michael was also named the team's most valuable player. And the third nominee for Male Athlete of the Year is Nathan Schneiderman of baseball. Nathan was a left-handed pitcher. He was the ABCA All-Region two seasons, first team all-conference. American Rivers accomplishments included lowest ERA at .39, second lowest batting average against him. Opponents only batted 154. He was third in saves and 4-0 and as a starter. Those are the three nominees for Male Athlete of the Year. And the Male Athlete of the Year, the winner is Blaze Barista of the football team. We have three nominees for the Female Athlete of the Year. Our first nominee is Allison Beeman of the track and field team. The UD school records that Allison has set, indoor, 55 meters, 60 meters, 100 meters, and 200 meters. Indoor relays, 4 by 100 meter, 4 by 200, 4 by 400, and the distance medley. In the outdoor season, she has the UD school record in the 200 meter. Outdoor relays, the 4 by 200 meter and the sprint medley. American Rivers Conference champion in the 200 meters where she went undefeated. She was the National Athlete of the Week. She's a three-time All-American. She's an eight-time conference champion with 11 all-conference awards in her career. She's the 2019 American Rivers Conference track and field MVP, and she's a part of a top 10 team finish at the 2019 NCAA championships. The second nominee for Female Athlete of the Year is Alexa Martin, a soccer player. Alexa is sixth all-time in single-season assists with 12. She was third-team all-region, third-team scholar all-region, a three-time American Rivers Conference all-conference member, a three-time ARC Academics all-conference member. Overall, in her career at UD, Alexa started 67 matches and played in all 67 of them for the Spartans over her years. She scored three goals and had 15 assists in her career for a total of 21 points. Alexa was honorable mention in the Iowa Conference as a freshman, all-conference as a sophomore, and all-conference in the American Rivers Conference as a junior and senior. She has also received all-conference academic honors in her sophomore, junior, and senior year. Based on the UD record book, she is currently sixth overall in assists in a single season. And our third nominee for Female Athlete of the Year is Kara Wright of the volleyball team. Kara competed in 100 matches in three seasons. She was honorable mention All-American, two-time team member of the American River Conference Tournament Championships. She was a two-time ARC All-Conference player, the 2018 ARC Volleyball MVP. She had a thousand, was a member of the 1,000 Kill and 1,000 Dig Club. She had 2.87 kills per set and 3.06 digs per set. She had a career-high 27 kills versus Loris, and her UD accomplishments include being number 9 in kills per set and number 7 in total attacks. 
Those are the three nominees for Female Athlete of the Year. And the Female Athlete of the Year, our winner is Allison Beeman of the Track and Field team. We have two nominees for the men's team of the year. Our first nominee is the football team who finished with a 7-3 record and second place finish in the American Rivers Conference. They've had five consecutive winning seasons. They're 36 and 21 wins over the last five years, which is the best in school history. And our second nominee for men's team of the year is the baseball team who finished their 2019 season with a 26-15-1 overall record, which ties them for the most wins in a season. They also qualified for the American Rivers Conference Tournament and made it to the corner finals as the number four seed. So those are the two nominees for the male team of the year. And the winner for men's team of the year is the football team. <laughs> And our final Sparty Award that we're going to be giving is the Women's Team of the Year. We have five nominees. First, we have the Women's Golf Team, who were the American Rivers Conference champs, first time in school history when they won by 21 strokes. In the 2019-20 season, the Women's Golf Team won 7 out of 10 tournaments played, including Judson College, Monmouth College, Myrtle Beach Shootout, American Rivers Conference Preview, Luther College Classic, Knox College, Prairie Fire Invite, and the American Rivers Conference Tournament. This is the best team in school history that the women's golf team has had at UD as they scored a 326.3, the lowest scoring average, which is a school record. They would have competed in the 2020 National Championship at the PGA National in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. 
The second nominee is the women's soccer team, who had an amazing season with a 12-win, 5-loss, and 2-tie record and finished in third place in the American Rivers Conference. They finished the season ranked 6th in the North Region by the NCAA. The Spartans have now completed two straight years in the top 10 of the North Region. The team has also earned 14 academic all-conference players, which is the most in the entire conference. Five total Spartans made the all-conference list with the program's most ever received all-North Region awards. Victoria Rothler, Carissa Brown, Brooke Brodzinski, Amanda Klebeck, and Alexa Martin all earned all-North Region awards. Three Spartans, Victoria Rothler, Carissa Brown, and Alexa Martin also earned Scholar All-Region awards, while Victoria Rothler earned a third-team academic All-American, as she is now the second player in program history to win the award. The third nominee for Women's Team of the Year is the softball team, who broke a total of 16 team and individual records most importantly, total wins and consecutive wins and earned a berth into the American Rivers Conference Tournament. Stolen bases, walks, runs scored, and RBIs were all team records that were broken, while five different individuals broke nine different records. Lexi Schmidt with pitching wins, Kayla Brunig with pitching saves, Kaylin Featheringill with hits, runs scored, and at-bats, Brandon Brandy Herity with home runs and RBIs, and Mo Tumire with base on balls. The fourth nominee for Women's Team of the Year is the Outdoor Track and Field, who finished ninth place at the NCAA Division III Outdoor Track and Field Championships in Geneva, Ohio. They scored the most points at the American Rivers Conference in school history, 157 and a half points. They also scored the most ever conference champions, in seven events by 10 different athletes at the outdoor championships. They also did the most ever all-conference awards, which are 16 at the conference meet. They earned the conference track MVP honors, that was Allison Beeman, and the field MVP honors, Jenna Highmark. They also broke seven school records during the outdoor season and contributed significant points to UD's best Learfield Cup standings finish. The fifth and final nominee for Women's Team of the Year goes to the volleyball team, who in 2019 finished with a record of 22-11, and 11, finishing third in the American Rivers Conference with a 5-3 and three record and battled for a third-place seed in the American Rivers Conference Tournament, where they beat the number six-seeded Buena Vista at home on November 5th and 5 cents, before beating the number two-seeded Dewhawks at Loris in five sets on November 7th, and on November 9th, they traveled to Wartburg for the finals and returned victorious for their second consecutive American Rivers Conference Tournament Championship. With their win, they secured back-to-back -back appearances in the NCAA Regional Tournament. Traveling to face the host and number one seeded St. Thomas in the first round of the tournament, the, start the Spartans lost three games to one, which ended their season. So those are the five nominees for the Women's Team of the Year. And the winner of the Women's Team of the Year is the Women's Golf Team. recognize some coaches for some honors and achievements and milestones that they reached this past year. Stan Zweifel, our head football coach, got his 100th career victory. 
Jason Berna in women's soccer got his 200th win. And Jeff Lamb, our women's softball coach, got his 300th win. So congratulations to Coach Zwiefel, Coach Berna, and Coach Lamb for reaching these historic milestones. I want to take this opportunity to thank everybody for participating and being a part of the 2019-20 athletic year. I know it was a difficult year as some of you seniors didn't get to fulfill finishing out your spring season, but we thank you for all you've done for the University of Dubuque Athletics, for all your dedication and sacrifice and hard work. I know I speak on behalf of President Bolak and Athletic Director Dan Runkel, as well as all our coaches. Uh, you have been great representatives to the University of Dubuque on how you carry yourself both on the field, off the field, and in the classroom. And even though this was an abbreviated version of the uh, Sparty Awards, we're believing and hoping that next year we'll be able to all gather and give these Sparty Awards like we've done in the past. But we want to thank all the seniors again for your dedication uh, to the University of Dubuque and the sports you participated in, whether it be any academic or athletic awards. And we want to wish you the best as you move on with your future endeavors and look forward to seeing all the underclassmen back on campus again in the fall uh, if that all works out to happen, and we hope that it does. So stay safe, God bless you, and have a great summer.